those of you who stayed, thank you for uh, sticking around for the Q and A. Uh, <laughs> and thank you to you guys for. Uh, hey, you. Thanks, you. Adrian. <laughs> Um, I don't know where to start. That's a, it's a great film, and uh, I wish we had the filmmaker up here to ask some He's questions. coming. He's indisposed right now. All right. It was a long movie. Yeah, he's on the bathroom. Well, right. we'll start with you. First off, um, a fantastic performance, and uh, thank you. And ben John. ben John, yours as well. Fantastic. I have to say that uh, your, some of your films actually inspired me to be a, to be a filmmaker. So uh, thank you for your work in, uh, throughout your career. Thank you uh, very much, buddy. Martin, get up here, buddy. Martin, great job. Thank you. So uh, I guess my first question goes to you, Martin. Um, I mean, this is a bold. Um, person to make a film on after, I mean, uh, The Raging Bull being, you know, top 10 of every top 100 films of all time. And uh, so I was really interested to see this movie. Um, and I think you did a great job in showing a different movie than Raging Bull. And uh, I, I wasn't really, I didn't know what to expect. So uh, I'd love to hear how you did some of your research into um, into uh, Jake uh, after, you know, kind of picking up where uh, Raging Bull left off, which, you know, people really never looked into it or never researched it, so I'd love to hear where you uh, came up with the, the idea for the film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Craig, you can answer that. <laughs> well, the, uh, the film was first uh, offered to me through uh, a friend of mine, uh, Joe Allegro, who, I, as I mentioned earlier, had gone to Hofstra University, and they had the rights to the book that Jake had written. And I, you know, I, I also felt that way too. You know, that this was sort of sacred ground and, and should be left alone. But then when I, when I met Jake and heard his story and a lot of the stuff about his childhood and some of the, uh, you know, the pathos in, 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 in his in his boxing career and, and what he went through. Uh, I just thought that there was a, uh, there was more to the story that needed to be told. There definitely was, which uh, uh, so thank you for for, for making it. Um, there was clearly uh, some of a bit of an homage to uh, Raging Bull, some of the uh, fight sequences, which I thought was nice to actually acknowledge it rather than pretend that it didn't exist. And um, clearly, you did this film on. Uh, for a very low budget, and that brings me to some of the cast that you got outside of some of the folks we have standing on the stage. I mean, uh, Tom Sizemore, Joe Mantegna, Penelope Ann Miller. Um, I mean, how'd you pull together such a fantastic cast on the budget that you had? I was at a uh, film festival. Where, where was that fest? It was in uh, Atlantic City, I think it was. Where we re met. Yes. <laughs> William and I had worked on, on, on a film years ago that I was, I was a, a producer on. By the way, this is Dave Colbert, who was also in the picture. And uh, we, we, I, was at a, I was at a film festival, and I bumped into William. Uh, he had a film there. I had a film there. And uh, during one of the breaks, well, why don't you tell this story? I think you probably tell it better than I can. <laughs> I can't tell it very well. He comes up to me and he goes, listen, man, how do you feel about playing Jake LaMotta? And I was like, I grabbed him literally by his lapel and I pushed him against the wall and I said, you should not fuck with fucking actors. You, know? <laughs> you shouldn't say stuff like that unless you're serious. He goes, no, I'm serious. Um, Jake wrote a second book and he, it's called Raging Bull 2 which we weren't allowed to have the movie be called. And he said, I'm serious. And I, I didn't believe him at all. And uh, it took a solid year, two years, before it actually became serious. But one day he did call me up and say, let's, we're going to make this movie. And, and we did. <laughs> Uh, I guess my next question is for Jean Mera. Um, is that how you pronounce it? Bonjour. 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 Sorry. Uh, you actually had an easy job in that, you know, uh, they don't really had anybody, anything to compare your role to because you kind of picked up where Raging Bull left off. But you had a, a tough, tough, tough job in uh, actually being compared to some, be some of the same age range, some of the same um, similar moments that were seen in, in Raging Bull. So how did you take that on as you being a young actor and uh, coming into this role? 
Um, well, for me, I mean, uh, the moments in this film that I have aren't the moments that are in Raging Bull. For me, the moments are like him as a kid and, and what started everything with his father and the, the kind of menacing father he had. Um, but, I mean, I worked a lot with, with William and, and he had something already set and so I just made sure that I was uh, portraying something that would make sense that it ended up being what William did. So, yeah. That's what I say. You know, the story of Jake, I, 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 I asked Jake one time in the beginning, I, I was dumbfounded as to why he would want to see a mo another movie made about him because obviously Raging Bull is Raging Bull, the great Raging Bull. And Jake's reply to me was, I want people to see that there's more to me. He said, I want people to understand that there is more to the story that I'm a fighter and that I never gave up my whole life. I still haven't given up. I keep punching, I keep on going. And to me, that was the most inspirational thing I could ever want to hear. And that's, that's the reason I did this film. And, and that's the reason I'm so happy that people are seeing this film today. And I think all you guys did a great job in actually showing more to his life than Raging Bull, and I was really enjoyed the film. I was fascinated by it. Um, and uh, so, uh, some of the legends that are in this cast are, are um, obvious and, and amazing faces and amazing people we've all enjoyed over the years. So, um, how did you find Young Jake? Uh, He's got the nose. <laughs> Actually, that was part of it, is that we needed to find somebody that, that could potentially look like a, a young William. And, and um, we auditioned about 700 or so uh, actors from around the world to play young Jake. And on the last day, no, it was the next to last day of auditions, Mojan walked in. And uh, he did the scene where he's you know, putting money on, on his mom's desk, and, he's, and he was a very emotional scene. And uh, he did it with this very thick, uh, you know, New York accent. And, uh, and I knew he was the right guy. I just, I, I knew that, but, you know, there was a, a committee there to, to make decisions. And so I remember running out the door after Mojana saying, hey, man, I got to bring you back tomorrow. Make sure that, you know. <laughs> that I'm not dreaming that this because you're the guy, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, he has this thick Australian, Australian accent. And, and you know, a lot of the, the filmmakers that inspired Mojan, or a lot of the old school filmmakers that have inspired me over the years, Robert Altman, Coppola, Scorsese, et cetera. And there was just a simpatico about the process, the creative process, and storytelling through cinema that Mojan had at a very, has still at a very young age that uh, sort of grasp on that um, storytelling, three three act storytelling arc, and, and so he came in the next day and, and he nailed it again, and it was just an absolute blessing that he, you know, and we're, we've stayed very close friends, so very fortunate for me, you know, to have this cast made it very easy, you know, and, and, and to a certain extent, everybody did their homework. I mean, it was very emotional material, and it was a very grueling schedule. We did the film in 20 days, and we had. We were running all over, all over. 20 days of filming. At age 57, they gave me 67 days to prepare. <laughs> okay, so I went from being the butcher weighing about 250 to having to get in the ring and fight. And <laughs> in 67 days. So fuck you guys, and thank you guys. For now. But, uh, <laughs> it, it, and I have to tell you that, you know, my friend right here, Steve Fleming, this man right here, he made, he made so much of this film possible. He stepped in and he trained me as a fighter. And, and in the short amount of time, and Lojan, and we stepped in there and with the very short amount of time, we were able to study, dissect Jake, and be able to approach this, this film you know, from a physical perspective. The rest of it, obviously, was a lot too. But it, it, I just thank you so much to Steve. Uh, I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, everything that he gave to us for nothing. God bless you, brother.
Thank you, everyone. Um, no, John and Will, unbelievable, the best fighters ever trained. I said after the movie, I'll never train another boxer. They've got to be actors. These guys, I mean, you tell them something, they went home, they came back the next day when it mastered. William lost 45 pounds in five weeks. Uh, we, we were starving Mojan that he had to eat all the lemons and oranges off the tree in the backyard because we wouldn't feed him. And this is all true stories, but I've got to tell a story about William. When he asked me to train him, we were here in New York, so I said, come, come out to, to my gym in Westbury. Let me see what I'm getting myself into. So I point him to the locker room, I get in the ring. He comes out of the locker room with his sweatpants pulled up, wearing flip-flops. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, what did I agree to do? So anyway, within minutes, he was moving like Muhammad Ali. We fast forward, we're out in LA. Mark, who's Jake Lamada's manager, is here somewhere, there he is, sends us out a whole load of stuff to help us do this ordeal. Stacks of tapes, footage that no one has ever seen on Jake LaMotta. First tape I pop in, Jake LaMotta comes out of the locker room, sweatpants pulled up, wearing flip flops. <laughs> he was already Jake LaMotta before we even got out there. He researched, the, the, to, to get a front row seat at watching what it takes for guys of, you know, like this that, that do what they do. I mean, I was there every day as he's in character. We were training eight hours a day, and on top of that, he was researching Jake's every little, how he scratched his head, how he ate his food. So to have a front row seat at that was amazing. And Mojan too, by the time, by the time I was done with Mojan, he could fight in the Golden Gloves for real, and he probably would have won. He was, yeah, he, I mean, I still want to train him. If he, if he lived in New York, he'd be, he'd be a pro fighter of mine by now. He, amazing, the dedication they both did. Um, just, you know, it, it made the movie so great. That's all I can say. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, um, regarding my training, I mean, I'm, I'm born and raised in Australia, so when, I remember when I auditioned for the film, they were like, um, <clears throat> do you box? And I was like, yeah, yeah I've had a fight. I fight, you know, I've had some fights. <laughs> and, uh, and then I remember when I got the part and I met Steve, uh, he, we, I had to shadow box in the callback and Steve was like, you're, you're shadow boxing. He wasn't, he wasn't very impressed with me. So we started fighting uh, straight away and I did really gruelly training both with Steve. Steve was very specific in making me train like Jake. And then I went to another gym, uh, Wild Card, where I just practically just fought, fought uh, pros just so I can understand what's it like to get the shit kicked out of you. And, uh, <laughs> and, but Steve was monumental in making sure that I, I, I fought, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the style that Jake fought at, so, yeah. And I'm sorry to say Robert De Niro has been outdone. No doubt about it. He did, he did not capture that style of LaMotta that these two guys caught. The left hand down. LaMotta broke all the rules and he won all the fights. He did break all the rules. He broke all the rules. Jake LaMotta, nothing he did was textbook boxing. His left was down, his right was up. He'd start with five left hooks in a row. No, no, nothing was textbook boxing and this is the first time I've got to see it on film the way Jake LaMotta fought. I mean, I'm really proud of these guys. They, they trained like, seriously, like they were fighting for the championship of the world. It was unbelievable. I mean, we were living off bananas, turkey, and water for, <laughs> for, for two months and just different, two bottles of water, two handfuls of turkey, a, a banana. Two bananas, a handful of turkey, three bottles of water. But that's what we basically, so I, I dropped 35 pounds training these guys. And uh, it was really great. And, and Martin, if I could tell a funny story about Martin. Martin makes directing look easy. I remember sitting next to him once, and he's putting out some other fires on his Blackberry, and they're, they're setting up the scene, and they go, Martin, you like it? And Martin looks up, and he looks down, and he continues to his thing. He says, no, I hate it. Now I'm looking at Martin and I'm looking at the screen and it looks good to me, so all the, all the guys on set, they're like, oh, yeah, sorry, so uh, what, do you, what do you want us to do? And he looks up and he, no, they, they said, what's wrong with it? He looked up again, he goes, it's a soap opera. So they're like, what, what, what should we do? He looked at it a third time and said, lower the camera seven inches, put a wider lens on. And I'm sitting there watching this, and it went from a soap opera to a cinematic movie right in front of my eyes. And I couldn't believe that he could fix that in a blink of an eye, just by three glances. And it turned it into something so cinematic that it just blew my mind to see someone, I mean, like I said, he's like, we lost our location tomorrow, we're trying to find a new location for tomorrow, but uh, just drop the camera seven inches, put a wider lens on, and bang, it turned into a movie right in front of me. Masterful job.
Well, great, great job. I don't know how to really follow up with any uh, more questions. Other than you filmed that right here, in, some of that here in Nassau County, right here in Rockville Center, yeah? No, no, none of it was filmed here. None of it? No. No, that's Raging Bull 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I was going to see if uh, anyone in the audience had any questions. That's the way we like it. Right. Oh, there's one uh, over there. There's one over there. to juvenile detention home, he, he didn't go to jail for that uh, in real life. But you know, in the film kind of just wants to show that he was on his way to committing a series of crime which eventually leads him to be in that kind of place, which was a nightmare to be in. Um, yeah, so. May I, oddly, oddly enough, and I, I, I want to state this, and I'm so proud that it ended up in the movie because at first it, it was a question whether it was going to be, was the guy, the priest inside the reform school, uh, the real priest's name was Father Joseph. And Father Joseph not only trained Jake LaMotta officially as a fighter, he also trained Rocky Graziano. So that was a pretty tough priest. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That kind of guy. I also noticed, I noticed Robert Davi on the steps of the courthouse. And I was like, oh, where's he coming into the movie? And then as the movie went on, I yeah. said, well, maybe he got cut out of the movie. I didn't know, you know what Robert Davi's presence was on the steps of the courthouse. But then he comes back later, and we see that he's the kid. Were there other scenes that had him in it leading up, or was that just a seed that was planted uh, from the beginning? Planted. Right. Mm. Right. True story. Cool. Anyone else? In the background, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That was In fact, he yelled out. What did he do? What are you doing here? He yelled out, William, speak up, I can't hear you. <laughs> that was the only scene that took about, what, 12 takes? <laughs> That's tough. Did Jacob have a scene filmed? I didn't speak to Jake about it. Uh, Mark. The the question was the Jake's manager. Uh, he, I know Jake well, told him, and he was touched, and he really would have loved to have come here today. And unfortunately, he didn't. But he gives everyone his best wishes, and uh, he puts Williams' performance up there with De Niro's. You know, uh, you know, an interesting anecdote. Interesting anecdote to that question was we screened the film uh, in uh, L.A. And um, during the Q&A, uh, a woman stood up and she said, um, I'm Jake's sister. Uh, and she said, I'm so glad this movie was made. She really enjoyed it as well. She was the, ba the baby in the first scenes, you know. Jake was a busy guy. <laughs> he had Natasha Henstridge. Wait, 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 he had Jake, there's no Miller. quitter. There's no quitter in Jake LaMotta. God bless him. You know, <laughs> he never quit. I think that's the whole point of the movie. He's still out there fighting and punching, and he still has hope. One of, one of the things I love was that last scene, you know, when I'm over there, and, and you see him, he's old, he's aged, he can barely move almost, and suddenly something wakes him up again, and you see this thing go off inside him. And that, that's Jake, that's the Jake I got to know. The first day I met Jake, I'm, I am standing in front of the restaurant, and I'm like all excited, I'm gonna meet Jake Lamont, and I look up the street, and I see this guy, he's gotta be pushing 90, and I'm talking it's maybe 12 degrees out, and he's wearing a t-shirt and a cowboy hat. Like walking, like this. <laughs> he 
he, I watched him walk for three blocks to the restaurant, and he didn't flinch at all. And it, it was freezing out, and he just walks into the place. The first thing he does is he goes, I'll have a Bloody Mary. <laughs> He's such a man. I mean, there's something so special about Jake. And, and, and I don't know how he kept track of it, because I could barely keep track of it. <laughs> Uh, uh, a funny story that William just met. I was in a fancy restaurant with Jake at Newport. The owners were going crazy that he was there, and all of a sudden Jake just lights up a cigar, you know, in the middle of the restaurant. And everyone, you know, it's California, everyone's freaking out. And Jake's just there smoking a cigar through the whole time. They, like, tell him to stop, and he shakes his head, and he continues to smoke the cigar. It's amazing. He was doing it on set the whole time. Yeah. And then he was there throughout the whole film in the movie. Well, thank you guys. Thank you all for a great film and sharing it with us. Thank you, Martin. Yeah.